Hi, and welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. In our earlier presentation on comparative statics, we looked at how our prediction of quantity and our prediction of price changed when something else changed. But it was a very simple analysis. We looked at the before predictions and the after predictions. Now, in many economic situations, we care about the change in quantity and the change in price over time. In other words, if something else changes, does that lead to a bigger change in quantity in the short term or a bigger change in quantity in the long term? Does it lead to a bigger change in price in the short term or in the long term? To do that, to carry out that comparative statics, we need to introduce the concept of time. And to introduce the concept of time, we have to show how elasticity of demand and supply change over time. That's what we're going to look at in this presentation. Just a reminder, we've been looking at the own price elasticity of demand, and that's the percentage change in the quantity demanded of a particular good divided by the percentage change in the price of the same good. The own price elasticity of demand is a measure of the sensitivity of change. Remember that we said that if a small change in price leads to a big change in quantity, then we have elastic or very sensitive demand. If a big change in price only leads to a small change in quantity, then we have inelastic or insensitive demand. However, we would actually expect the sensitivity of demand to change over time. We'd expect there to be a bigger change in quantity the longer a price change persisted. To see that, let's suppose you like apples. Normally apples are $3 per kilogram. But let's suppose you go along to the market and the price has gone up to $6 per kilogram. It's doubled. What do you do? Well, in the short term, you may still buy a fair few apples. Maybe not quite as many as before, but hey, you'd plan to buy apples, you were planning to make some apple pie tonight, yeah, the price has gone up, but you still buy pretty much the same level of apples as before. In other words, your demand is pretty insensitive or inelastic. Despite the price doubling, you buy about the same amount of apples. But what happens over the next few days, weeks and months if the higher price persists? Well, you'll look around for substitutes. You might find that you try different types of fruit. You might try different recipes to save on the amount of apples you purchase because they're now more expensive. In other words, over time, you will tend to consume fewer apples as you substitute away. So over time, your demand becomes more sensitive or more elastic. Now that story for apples is one that holds in general in our economy. For any price change, the effect it has on quantity tends to be greater the more time passes. Or as economists often say, the short run effect is less than the long run effect. Let's see how elasticity changes over time in a simple market. We'll look at the market for eggs. We've got the price of eggs up here on the vertical axis. And we've got a demand curve on here. Given the price of $2.40, that will be our starting price, the initial quantity demanded is 10,000 dozen eggs. I've labelled this demand curve with a little SR. The SR is going to mean short run. This demand curve is going to capture the impact effect. Or in other words, this demand curve is going to answer the question, if the price of eggs changes, how does the quantity of eggs that people would like to buy change in the short term, very soon after the price changes. So let's suppose the price of eggs goes from $2.40 up to $3, and let's say that in the short term, the immediate effect is a lessening of the amount that people would like to buy from 10,000 dozen eggs down to 8,000 dozen eggs. So we've had a 25% increase in the price of eggs, and that's led to a 20% drop in the amount of eggs that are demanded. So that gives us an own price elasticity of demand for eggs of 20 divided by 25, which is negative, remember 
quantities going down as price goes up, of negative 0.8. So our own price elasticity of demand for eggs is negative 0.8 in the short run. It's inelastic. But now let's introduce the concept of time. We've looked at the short run or the immediate effect, but what's going to happen over time as people adjust to the new higher price of eggs? Well, that's represented by our new dotted line that we've got here. That's going to be our long run demand curve. Notice that it still goes through our original point. If the price hadn't changed from $2.40, then people would still be buying 10,000 dozen eggs. That's in the short run on the long run. If there's no change, nothing happens. However, notice that this new demand curve, this long run demand curve, is more elastic or flatter than our short run demand curve. In other words, it tells us that as the price goes up to $3, consumers are going to tend to want to buy fewer eggs in the long run than in the short run. Similarly, by the way, if we'd had a price fall, our long run demand curve would tell us that people want to buy more eggs in the long run than in the short run. So this dotted line represents people's choice after they adjust to the change in the price of eggs. If the price goes up, they look for substitutes, they tend to buy fewer eggs. If a price had gone down, people would have substituted two eggs and bought less of something else. So now we've put some numbers on here. If the price of eggs still goes from $2.40 up to $3, but while in the short run, quantity only dropped from 10000 to 8000 in the longer run, it drops from 10000 to 5000 this means that on our long run demand curve, the percentage change in quantity is now 50%. The price change is still 25%. So our long run elasticity of demand is minus 50 divided by 25 or minus 2. So our long run demand curve is elastic. It has an elasticity of demand of minus 2. Just as a reminder, our short run demand curve had an elasticity of minus 0 0.8. So it was significantly less elastic. So what our long run and short run demand curves do is they capture the idea that in the longer term, people can adjust more to a change in price. We can show the same type of change over time with a supply curve. Let's look at the market for pizza. We've got the price of pizza up here, and let's suppose that if pizzas initially have a price of $10 per pizza, then sellers would like to sell 1,000 pizzas per day. We've drawn here a short run supply curve. That's what the SR stands for. It's going to capture our short run or our immediate effect of a price change on supply. Let's suppose that the price of pizza goes up by $4 or 40% from $10 to $14. And that leads to an increase in the quantity of pizza that sellers would like to supply from 1000 to 1100 or a 10% increase. That means that in the short run, the own price elasticity of supply for pizza is the percentage change in quantity, 10% over the percentage change in price, 40%, or 0.25, or a quarter. Notice that that's positive because price and quantity are moving in the same direction. Now let's suppose that more time passes, the price of pizzas remains at the higher level of $14. What's going to happen? Well, at the higher price, some restaurants who previously didn't sell pizza are likely to enter into the production of pizza. They might buy some pizza ovens. New pizza restaurants will start to open because pizzas are going to be more profitable than before. So we would expect that in the longer run, over time, the long run might be months, may even be as long as a year in this situation, we would expect that the $4 price rise in the price of pizzas will lead to a bigger change in the quantity supplied 
happen in the short run. And that's captured by the dotted line on this diagram. This dotted line is going to capture the long run effect of a change in price on the supply of pizza. Again, one point to notice is it goes through our original point. If the price of pizza hadn't changed from $10, then in the short run or in the long run, there would be a thousand pizzas supplied. If the price goes up, the long run change is bigger than the short run change. In other words, more people go into selling pizzas. If the price had dropped, of course, then the reduction in quantity would have been bigger in the long run than in the short run. In the short run, a reduction in price would have hit the profits of pizza sellers, but in the short run, they would have kept open. Over the longer term, some of them would have moved out of the pizza industry, and that would have meant there would be a bigger reduction in the quantity of pizzas supplied when a price drops. That's captured by this dotted long run supply. So let's put some numbers on here. In the long run, the $4 or 40% increase in the price of pizza has led to an increase in the supply of pizza from 1,000 pizzas a day to 1,500 pizzas a day. So our long run elasticity of supply is going to be 1.25. It's going to be greater than 1. Our supply in the long run is going to be elastic. Just as a reminder, remember of the elasticity of our short run supply curve was only 0.25. It was inelastic. The percentage change in quantity was less than the percentage change in price in the short run, but the percentage change in quantity is bigger than our percentage change in price in the long run, reflecting that in the long run, the change in quantity is bigger or quantity is more sensitive to changes in price in the long run. So we've seen that both demand and supply will become more elastic in response to a price change over time. In the long run, demand and supply are more elastic than in the short run. In our next presentation, we're going to use that to expand on our comparative static analysis.